dangerous like if you stick it in your arm or your hands or anywhere. Uh, from the time they're pups they have those horns on the back. And, uh, and through these holes you'll see like little uh, gills that breathe. I'm not sure of, uh, of all the features, but it looks like an intake here. But they're very squirmy, so when we haul them up, we hold on them like that. And you see the mouth open up, then we take the hook and roll it around. But uh, uh, sometimes we go home and we show our wives how we handle these dogfish and grab by the snow. <laughs> Terry, what is it you're doing when you're when you're pulling in and bobbing and then well, it back? Well, my weight hits the bottom, right? I know where bottom is. When I jig the line up like like that, the hooks are going up and down in the water. And fish see that movement and bite it, right? If there's any there. It takes a lot of skill to fish the Bay of Fundy. The tides here run higher and stronger than anywhere else in the world. It's where Terry Farnsworth made his living fishing cod for more than 20 years. A hook and a line, one fish at a time. They call it hand lining. It's the marine equivalent of family farming, and it's been a way of life on Canada's east coast for centuries. Probably one of the lower tech ways of catching a fish. According to big corporations, you're a professional if you got a dragger. And if you're someone like me, you're uh, not a real fisherman. So they they got their pockets full, and here we are. You know, a jerk on one end, waiting for a jerk on the other. So like. Sooner or later, I gotta make up my mind. Do I sell out? Or do I keep my hope that people's gonna hold together and get this mess straightened out? If you're not from around here, you probably think fishing for cod is a thing of the past. It was one of the most bountiful resources in the world. But in the early 1990s, stocks off Canada's east coast collapsed and most of the industry was shut down. But not in southwest Nova Scotia. Around here, quotas were cut back, but there was still enough fish to support a smaller industry. Company draggers still fill their powerful nets, but for hook and line fishers like Terry, a day's catch is nothing like what it used to be. This year, I've landed so far 50 pounds of cod, I got a $17 uh, whatever uh, monitoring uh, bill and $85 for ice for me and another hand liner. Plus the fuel. Have you broken even yet? What? Have you broken even yet? No way. No. If I sell it, I bought into their plan. That was the plan, to get rid of all the little, small 
small business and it all ended up in a large corporation. I don't like buying quota and I don't like leasing licenses and a lot of these things like this because that's what ruined the fishery. Uh, people ain't been through the debates. They don't understand like the whole picture because it's confusing. The big picture is confusing, even for people who fish. Making sense of it's one thing, fixing it's another. And in the meantime, there's survival. For Terry, that'll mean heading up the bay once dogfish show up in the fall. As for cod, you can hardly cover your fuel costs fishing with the draggers leave behind. So most of the time these days, he doesn't go out but he still makes a daily pilgrimage to the wharf. Yeah, I was gonna go up today, but I don't know if I get a crew or not. I never heard back from Irvin. Oh, you never? No. All the days young yet. You wanna go up on the flat anyway. That's it? right, yeah. Until the early 1990s, there were hundreds of people who made a living yeah. handlining around Digby. Yeah. But a lot has changed in 15 years. It's the secretary how many active hand honors there were this year, and she said three. So I, I got thinking, I said, well, that must be um, Paul German, Clayton Leslie, and myself. What does it feel like to be the last two of the last three? Uh, <laughs> well, I... I you feel alone. That's feel yeah, alone. it's terrible because it's our way of life. And uh, it's taken away from us. It's, it's totally, totally gone. The fisheries here in, in the Bay of Fundy and the Southwest Nova is headed for, for a total collapse. Who better to know the resource than the fishermen? And the fishermen are saying, um, you know, the fishery's headed here. Even some of the older fishermen that I never thought would utter these words are saying, we need to be shut down. This fishery needs to be closed for at least five years. And you know, you don't know how how shocking that is to hear some of these some of these old timers, some of these older fishermen say this. And even you know, even the younger guys are saying it. Because the hand liners and long liners are having to go further and further every year to find fish. Now for the last two years they haven't been able to find fish. They haven't been able to find enough to fish for. And from what I understand, that's the same thing that happened in Newfoundland. The inshore fisheries was telling the Department of Fisheries, you know this is a crisis coming, you know, something is happening here, we're having to go further and further, and nobody listened until it was too late. And I think the same thing has happened here. The, the, the hand liners in Newfoundland told them what was going to happen if they didn't stop doing what they were doing. And by the same token, we're saying the same thing down here. So when I'm sitting in a room of scientists with that are having discussions with DFO and other participants in the fishery, big corporate interests, whatever, when I go and say something as a handliner, they look at me as a nobody that don't know what he's talking about. But I told them, the last meeting I was to, that my catch was down 75% here in the bay by fishing in the same areas the way I traditionally always fish. This is what we own in terms of a public resource, no fish. And uh, the thing is, uh, how are we gonna fix it? dogs for season. Fishermen used to consider them a nuisance, but 
but nowadays dogfish is the only thing left you can catch with a hook and line. And Terry's traveling eight hours to the upper bay to find them. His friend Glenville Travis is meeting him at the wharf. Two years, Terry's come for dogfish. Basically, that we didn't have a dogfish fishery prior to, three years ago. And he's got no cod fishery down the bay because of the over exploitation of the ground fish by a certain fleet of boats. And those fleet of boats are twice as big as our boats and twice as big as his boats and they're they got ITQs, individual transferable quotas, which was designed for the corporate to take it over. Under Canadian law, marine resources are publicly owned. But transferable quotas privatized the fisheries by allowing independent fishers to sell their quota to the highest bidder. What that really means is big companies can buy them out. And that's what they're doing, and Terry Farnsworth is only running on, right now he's running on borrowed money, and he doesn't have a chance, but the same chance as a snowball in hell. He hasn't made enough money this year to pay for his fuel, let alone live. So, and he's one of the, la one of the last handliners. Terry Farnsworth should never have to come up. <clears throat> 60 miles or 70 miles to make his yearly living. He should be able to make it down off his own doorstep. We shouldn't have to go anywhere but where we are. But we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to tie up to the wharf and say to hell with it. Quite simple. I guess the reasoning behind it was that if you take the fisheries and put it in the hands of a few, then it's a lot easier to manage. The, the government sees that as just, just a whole lot easier. But what it does is puts the ownership of a Canadian resource into the hands of a few individuals. But what if one of these guys who have a large amount of quota um, decide, you know, I'm gonna retire? There'll be nobody local that'll be able to afford the bill. The huge, you know, the huge, huge conglomerates around the world are gonna be the ones that'll have the money to pay pay the price. And then and then what do we got? We've got a Canadian resource owned by foreign interest. How wrong is that? Transferable quotas were put in place in the early 1980s. First in the offshore factory trawler fleets, and then in the smaller scale inshore fisheries. And everywhere these ITQs were put in place, the corporate buyouts followed. Our children so in 1995, when the hook and line cod fishery was next up for ITQs, fishing communities across the Maritimes stood up in protest. The Minister of Fisheries continuously stated that he wouldn't talk while government offices were occupied. And we continuously stated that we would not leave until we talked. This same approach existed until yesterday when the Minister of Fisheries reversed his decision. DFO buildings were occupied across Nova Scotia. One office was taken over by a group of women. Around Digby, fishermen were demanding local control. John Carney was a leader in that fight. That if, if the government wasn't going to manage the fishery for social benefit, then the fishermen would manage it for social benefit. And they would take control, which is where we came up with the idea of community-based management. There's two parts to my questions are concerned. One is the way we're fishing is like, like, like me. We thought we had made up the term community-based management. We didn't know that in other parts of the world, at the same time, this was becoming a very important movement and force in many places. The result of the management of the fisheries, the ignorance to management and, and global... Thanks to community-based management, Hook and line fishers stopped a corporate takeover in their sector of the industry. But they couldn't put a stop to overfishing in the rest of the fisheries. Although it seemed like a huge victory at the time, this was such a small piece of the total 
privatization of the fisheries that it couldn't be sustained. Plus there wasn't enough fish left. It was too late in that sense, the fish were already gone. Uh, there's still a small fishery there that wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for that struggle. But in the end, this is the last generation of independent fishermen. When it comes time that uh, you can see you're not going to be able to make any money at all from from hand lining or, or whatever, uh, then you start to think, you know, uh, well, I guess the only thing I can do to leave this world without being in debt to the bank is, is to sell out and, and go do something else. Oh, it's against all my principles, really, uh, that no matter how how bad I hate the idea, I might have to do it too. Do you understand why it's taken him so long to realize that he really has to get out? He shouldn't have to. He shouldn't have to. We, the people, should be standing behind him. The guy that doesn't do any damage, instead of standing behind the Lawrence Corkums or the big corporates and the D.B. Kennys, those are the people that should be getting out of the fishing business and do what they're supposed to do. They are processors, they're not fishermen. But as long as Ottawa and the bureaucracy wants everybody out of the fishery except their buddies, then this is, theory is going to be out, because we're not their buddies. So, and I think probably we'll soon be out of it the way that... To survive in the fishing industry these days, you either get bigger or you go under. So Terry's left handlining behind. He's mortgaged his house. He's bought new gear. He's hired a crew. And this year, he's chasing dogfish as a longliner. Despite all of that, they're still there. You know, it can bring tears to your eyes some days to see what they have gone through and they're still coming together talking about sustainable management of the fishery. If it's not a sign of hope for them, it sure is a sign of hope for me. I don't know where it's going to end to. It, it could end up that I could lose the house that I had paid for when I was 31 uh, or everything I got. I don't know. Uh, I'm a bit stubborn. I, I don't think it's right that uh, corporate agendas should, should uh, uproot and change traditional ways of life. But yet we, we try to hang in there and, and keep going, right? Mark